Hi everyone, I'm Carl from the Cedro Alto Coffee Farmers Collective. This is episode 5 of Coffee Economics with Carl. This is the third in our three episode series on currency and exchange rates in the coffee supply chain. Now that we know what currency exchange rates are and how producers are affected by them, we're going to look at exchange rate risks. So how different supply chain actors are vulnerable to currency fluctuations, how they can protect themselves, and the implication of their risk on each end of the coffee supply chain, so roasters as well as producers. If you missed an episode and this doesn't make sense right away, feel free to look down in the description if you're seeing this on YouTube, where we have each video listed and linked in chronological order. There's also a link to the playlist where you can see each one. In the first video, if you got a chance to see that one, if not, it's, it's linked in the, in the description here. We went over what is meant by exchange rate, what exactly is a currency. And we took a look at a few scenarios, uh, pricing coffee in US dollars, FOB, versus uh, how that translates to a farmer price based on a fluctuating exchange rate. Uh, you can see here these three scenarios we looked at last time uh, based on different conditions at, at different points in time and that the profitability for the farmer was, was different each time. These assumed a static transaction, so everything was happening all at once, whereas in reality, these operations take time. The time between receiving parchment from a farmer, financing that harvest, and then eventually getting paid for that green coffee, FOB, when it's already on a boat, uh, could be two months, could be three, four months even. So exchange rate risk essentially is uh, the risk that the conditions will change during the time that you're exposed. So between the time when you make an agreement with a expected margin, you spend money on cost of goods sold until the time where you receive payment in a foreign currency, sell that foreign currency, what the difference might be between your projected income and your actual income by the time you receive it. So we're going to take a look at another operation. <clears throat> Here we have exchange rate risk in coffee. Uh, so let's say hypothetically we have a contract that's for $1.55 per pound green coffee delivery in two months time. So Let's say, um, you know, at, at this, this range, maybe we're going to have 80% of this will be what we have to spend on parchment. So let's say we're, we're an exporter in this case. Um, we're selling for 155 FOB, then we can pay to producer $1.24 per pound. Of course, we're not going to, to pay producers uh, US dollars per pound, we're going to pay producers Colombian pesos per kilo of parchment. So let's say today we made this agreement, as an exporter we signed a contract with the importer for this uh, 155 per pound, and today the Colombian peso is 3,000 pesos per US dollar. So then, uh, 3,000 times one dollar 24 that gives us a uh, cost of goods sold of 3720 pesos these 3720 pesos is is a derivative number this is equivalent of of what we would be uh, paying a farmer for parchment but translated into per pound of green coffee uh, so let's just take this number as it is for the sake of the example and then our sale price, $1.55 times 3,000, that gives us 4,650 pesos is what we are going to, to be paid by the exporter once we, we sell those dollars for Colombian pesos. With a cost of goods at 3,720, our profit then is 930 pesos per pound green coffee. That's a 20% 20, 20 margin. This is what we hope for. So that's, that's exactly how we want this to be. Uh, but the fact is, this isn't all going to happen today. Uh, we're going to 
pay farmers for parchment today, but we're not going to be paid until two months' time. So we're collecting parchment, we're waiting for this lot to be complete, we're dry milling, we're printing bags, we're filling out documentation and paperwork. Uh, a month goes by. Because the exchange rate is changing every single day, let's say the peso depreciates. It goes to 3,500 Colombian pesos per US dollar. Now in this case, our sale price in Colombian pesos would also rise because our sale price is in US dollars. So if the Colombian peso depreciates, that means for those US dollars, when we do bring them into Colombia and sell them for Colombian pesos, we can sell them for more. So even though our cost of goods sold is still 3,720 pesos because we already spent that money, that parchment is already ours, what we're selling it for is now worth 5,000 425 pesos is our cost of goods is still 3720 our profit is going to be 1705 pesos per pound green coffee now without doing anything differently just because of that fluctuation in the value of the peso versus the dollar our profit margin went up to 31 percent but after one month we're still in the middle of milling we don't have uh, freight booking yet. Um, we don't have our original documents ready to send to the exporter so that they can pay us. Uh, it's still going to be about another month, and anything can happen in that month. In this case, let's say the Colombian peso then appreciates. And this line is going down, but because this is how many Colombian pesos a dollar is worth, less Colombian pesos per dollar means the Colombian pesos is worth more compared with the U.S. dollar. So let's say the peso goes up or the dollar goes down to 2,500 Colombian pesos per US dollar. If that were to happen, our sale price in Colombian pesos would also go down because our sale price is in US dollars and therefore is dependent on that exchange rate. So if this were the case, if one US dollar were only worth 2,500 Colombian pesos now, our sale price is the same at $1.55, then our income as an exporter in Colombian pesos would only be 3875 Just in case it's unclear, uh, as Colombian exporters, we are only interested in Colombian pesos. We don't care how many US dollars are out there. It's not legal to have US dollars inside Colombia. We can't spend them on anything. Uh, farmers don't receive them for parchment, as far as I know. So we're going to have to convert these into Colombian pesos no matter what, because that's how we pay our rent and uh, our salaries and, and everything else. So let's say this is the case, and um, we're going to be earning $1.55 per pound at an exchange rate of 2,500 Colombian pesos per dollar. We have a sales price now of 3,875 pesos. Because we already bought parchment, we already bought the, the raw material that we're selling, we're exporting, that cost of goods sold does not change because we already spent it. And that's 3,720 pesos per pound green coffee. And if this is the case, uh, because of this appreciation of the Colombian peso versus the US dollar, our profit now two months later, by the time we get around to, to exporting, getting paid, is now only 155 Colombian pesos per pound. That's a 4% profit margin, which you know, is, is nothing near the 20% that we had projected and were expecting when we signed the sale contract and may not even be enough to cover our, our overhead, uh, what we spent to actually carry out the operation. Uh, this this very well could happen and uh, at the current time uh, this is really what a lot of a lot of people are worried about uh, because uh, a, a month or two ago the Colombian peso was at about uh, 3,400 pesos per dollar and then it goes up to 4,200 pesos per dollar uh, a lot of exporters who have slow turnaround 
uh, because you know they're working with micro lots or, or something else that's a little bit more complex, uh, are concerned that if they're paying quite a lot of pesos now because uh, the peso is weak in relation to the dollar, <clears throat> that by the time they get around to exporting and getting paid for those pounds of green coffee, uh, the peso will have appreciated again versus the US dollar. Uh, and this would be similar to the, the last case we see here. So their profit will be much less than projected and could very well be negative. So what could one do about this risk? How could one protect themselves from the risk of a fluctuating exchange rate? They could hedge. And what would that look like? Well, basically on the day that we sign this contract, we project our profit. Um, we're going to be purchasing our raw material, our, our goods of, cost of goods sold will be established in our local currency that day, uh, hypothetically in, a, in an ideal world. And then that same day, we would establish a hedge. So that would lock in, essentially, uh, this exchange rate <clears throat> and allow us to maintain this level of profitability no matter what happens in the, the actual currency market. Uh, now, it would, it would be ideal to, to establish a hedge up here. But when we're here on the day of signing this contract, we don't know where the market's going to go. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going to go up and then way down again? Is it going to go down and then way up again? We have no way of knowing uh, what's going to happen. So uh, the safest bet is to, to hedge ourselves based on today's market, protecting ourselves from an appreciation of the peso. But also, uh, if, if we were to do this, we wouldn't be able to take advantage of a depreciation of the peso. So there, are, there is an, an up and a downside. Uh, if you want to gamble, then if we want to gamble, then we won't hedge because it, uh, you know, it, the fluctuation might work out in our favor. Uh, but it could be eas just as easily uh, work against us. So if one has the ability and if the risk is too much to bear, then it could make sense to establish a hedge. What do those hedges actually look like? What do they do and how they work? That's another conversation for another day that we'll try to get to further along once we cover a little bit more of the basics in this series here. If you're just finding out about Cedro Alto through these videos, you should probably know that as a farmer's collective, our main objective is to sell the green coffees produced by our members to roasters in other parts of the world that appreciate these coffees and are willing to compensate farmers for their efforts. Right now, we have spot coffees in the US, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. And depending on quantity, we can deliver anywhere in the world. If you're interested in sourcing coffees through our collective group and partnering with one or more producers, feel free to reach out to me directly. My contact information is in the description of this video. Thank you for watching again. This is our second episode on currency exchange rates in the coffee supply chain. This one focusing on the risk of currency fluctuation. As always, if this brought up any additional questions or if anything wasn't clear, feel free to leave that in the comments here and we'll try to get to it in another video. If this information is useful for you and you'd like to keep up with new videos coming out, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.